This video is about the impact of the calculation interval on energy performance of buildings. It has been prepared by EPB Center team in the context of a service contract for the European Commission. This video is part of a series dealing with the basic concepts about energy performance in buildings. The example is about a building which is heated by a heat pump which can be powered by the grid or by on-site PV panels. As defined in the video about primary energy, here we can see the heating needs, the heat pump output which is higher due to technical system losses and all the components of delivered and exported energy. We will start from the condition where the heat pump is entirely powered by the grid and there is no contribution by PV panels. These tables demonstrate the calculation of primary energy. There is one row for each component of delivered and exported energy and you can see the actual amount of delivered energy, primary energy conversion factor and the actual amounts of primary energy. In the initial condition, there is no production by on-site PV panels, so no exported energy. But if we raise the PV production, at some time it will exceed the electricity input of the heat pump and exported energy will appear. In the video about exported energy, we explain that there are two alternatives to evaluate exported energy. Here we will focus on the option K exported equals zero. With this option, as soon as the PV production exceeds the electricity input, the energy performance will stay constant because the excess delivered energy is compensated by the exported energy. Let's go one step further. The values shown are seasonal totals. However, the calculation is not performed at once seasonally, but by calculation intervals, which might be one month or one hour, and then the results are summed at the end to get the seasonal results. If we have a closer look, we will discover that on a monthly basis, the trend of electricity input for the heat pump and of PV production are not the same. Heat pump input is in the winter months, whilst the PV production is mostly in summer. So the yearly calculation implicitly assumes that the PV electricity produced in winter will power your heat pump in summer, while the monthly approach will show that your heat pump is powered mostly by the grid in winter, whilst in summer the PV electricity is exported to the grid. The sum of monthly results in a nearly calculation can be simulated by a matching factor. That is, even if there is enough PV production to cover the whole electricity input, we will take into account that only 30% of this input will be covered along the year. So only 300 kWh PV electricity is used in the heat pump and 900 kWh is exported indeed. Coming back to this diagram that demonstrates the calculation of the energy performance of the building, the seasonal calculation is equivalent to assuming a matching factor of 100%. The monthly calculation interval highlighted a matching factor of 30%. And here we can see the effect of the energy performance of the reduced matching factor. The conclusion is that the energy performance depends on the calculation interval when K exported equals zero is selected. The matching factor could be increased by a local electricity storage, that is batteries, but this is not yet included in ISO 52000-1. If we select K exported equal one, then the energy performance will not depend on the matching factor, that is on the calculation interval. This is because any exported electricity is evaluated with the same conversion factor as grid electricity. So exported electricity at any time will compensate for electricity taken from the grid at any other time. This is true until the primary energy conversion factor are constant. If they were time dependent, there would be an effect even with K exported equal one when there is a time mismatch between production and use of on-site generated electricity. The same issue of time mismatch between on-site energy production and use applies also on shorter time scale. If we think about lighting, one might think to use PV production for that. However, most PV production occurs when lighting is not necessary. On a daily time scale, probably PV production will be concentrated during daylight whilst lighting will be required in the evening. This kind of time mismatch is easily identified by an hourly calculation time step. To summarize, if you select K exported equals zero, depending on the calculation interval, if you select a nearly calculation interval, then the heat pump will be powered in winter thanks to the solar radiation in summer. 
If you select a monthly calculation interval, the lighting will appear to be powered in the night thanks to the solar radiation during daylight. With the hourly calculation interval, you natively detect most time mismatch and avoid such automatic compensation. If you want to guarantee consistency between the different calculation intervals, you have to add matching factors, which statistically take into account time mismatch between production and use within the long calculation time interval. On the contrary, if you select k exported equal 1, then compensation occurs anyway at any time, and there is even compensation between energy carriers. Thank you for listening. This video has been prepared by EPB Center team in the context of a contract with the European Union, represented by the European Commission. The information and views set out in this video are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies, nor any person acting on their behalf, may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained therein.